Let's move further. What does the left hemisphere facilitator FL area do when it is cognitive? How does it process the CL if? We've suggested previously that the FL segment calculates utility. Jeremy Bentham, the facilitator philosopher, characterized utility as a measure of happiness. This orientation is confirmed by researchers. Using a backward masking procedure similar to that of previous studies, we used functional magnetic resonance imaging to study the amygdala and anterior cingulate gyrus during preattentive presentations of sad and happy facial effect. Conjunction analysis showed that masked effect perception, regardless of emotional valence, sad or happy, was associated with greater activation within the left amygdala and left anterior cingulate, or FL. Another confirms, during presentation of happy facial expressions, we detected a signal increase predominantly in the left anterior cingulate gyrus, or FL, bilateral posterior cingulate gyri, medial frontal cortex, and right supramarginal gyrus, brain regions previously implicated in visual, spatial, and emotion processing tasks. When this FL region stops operating, then the result is depression, and that certainly is not a very happy state. Major depressed patients with psychotic features showed decreased regional cerebral blood flow in the left subgenual anterior cingulate cortex, FL, relative to both non-psychotic patients and healthy controls. Jeremy Bentham thought that FL-generated utility could be calculated as an absolute number, such as 4 units of happiness, or perhaps 5 units of happiness. But modern theorists agree that one can do no better than generate an ordering of utility or happiness based upon comparisons. A, for instance, leads to more happiness than does B. All right, I'd now like to bring in EL, or left hemisphere exhorter strategy. According to our diagram, it connects directly to CL and thus to the will. What does this EL region do? Interestingly, neurology tells us that it stops things from happening. We read, Go P3 was located mainly in the medial part of the parietal cortex, server and perceiver, whereas the no-go P3 activity was observed in the left lateral orbitofrontal cortex, EL. Now, this is very interesting information. We've seen that a CL focus on some entity graze out what is not being viewed. Using the figure of a clearing in a forest, CL concern draws the trees nearer and makes the clearing smaller. The more CL is concerned about some particular issue, the tighter is the focus of this attention. If the action is not desired, then this may be counterproductive. CL concern can channel thought into the action and this might end up pushing the mind to pursue it more aggressively. Left hemisphere exhorter EL and its character loop, in contrast to CL, moderate the action itself. EL can thus bring habits under control. Previously, we saw that right hemisphere exhorter ER, with its potential discernment, was the cognitive generator for sexual excitement, and the engine behind habit. We notice now that left hemisphere exhorter EL with its character, when it becomes cognitive, is a balancing entity that can shape this activity. How is this done? Exhorter EL motivational urging is sensed by left hemisphere contributor CL as mood. Martin Heidegger, the contributor philosopher, tells us that mood is like the water in which a fish is swimming, and that it deeply influences contributor choices. Neurology again confirms this. Alteration of mood is associated with activation of orbitofrontal cortex or exorder, which may be critical to the experience of emotion. Let's expand our view for a moment. I'd like to point out that we've just covered the elements of the perceiving loop. 
Martin Heidegger and Immanuel Kant indicate that this perceiving region resonates with meaning, both in listening and in speaking. It is a combination of meaning in the perceiving loop and mood as it develops within the character circuit that reaches up to CL and helps it decide what matters. Let's apply this new machinery now to economics. CL, as we have seen, mediates desire. This may include basic needs such as hunger or thirst. The habit loop might be operative. The feeling circuit plays an important role, and at some point we will analyze it more closely. CL and its will focus this mix of desires by suppressing or graying out alternatives. As we said, whenever CL places the spotlight of its attention onto something, this tends to channel thought into that highlighted region, and the mind, as a result, will move in that direction. That's how CL will works. It leads to an important principle. As far as the mind is concerned, more is generally better. CL choice, in turn, influences FL. It is at this next FL level, in the calculation of FL utility, that things again have an opportunity to become more balanced. Generally, as more and more is acquired, a level is found at which satisfaction or satiation occurs. Soon after that, less is better. For instance, if one spoonful of ice cream is good, then two are better. However, after 25 spoonfuls, we might feel that we have perhaps had enough and that another spoonful would not make us more happy. We could tolerate it. It would not yet decrease our happiness, but neither would it increase it. We have in this way arrived at a peak in the utility curve that is calculated by FL. The marginal utility, or the increase in utility from the last spoonful to the last spoonful plus one more, is now nothing. In mathematical terms, the first derivative or rate of change of the utility curve is zero, and we are thus maximally happy. That's how economics works in the left hemisphere. All goods that can be had in abundance may in this way be brought to a maximum, and from then on they will no longer be noticed by the human mind. They in fact become totally invisible. In Heidegger's language, they vanish into the background of what is suppressed by CL. That's why diamonds are more valuable than water, even though water is crucial to life and diamonds are not. The supply of water is unlimited, and too much water is harmful to the health. And so by taking all that we want and then no more, we easily maximize the utility curve of our water use. Water then ceases completely to be part of our mental calculations. It becomes transparent to us. The supply of diamonds, in contrast, is limited, and because others have them, and we see them and want them, preference from mercy thought and feeling may cause them to become very highly valued indeed. Let's suppose, though, that we cannot take all that we wish. Perhaps there is an associated cost and our budget is limited. CL, in this case, can release a focus on a substitute. The unavailable item will be grayed out and the substitute is now left unsuppressed. If we can choose Coke in a can or Coke in a bottle, for instance, and Coke in a can is less expensive, then we will take as much as we can afford of Coke in the can and the Coke in the bottle will not be noticed by our mind and this once more will be the end of the matter. Heidegger tells us that this sort of initiative on the part of CL is not only the shaping of a potential action set by means of the elimination of alternatives, but also an assertion in preparation for speech. It means that FL and its reason loop's speech stream could now perhaps be exploited to instruct others to perform some action.